A very good evening and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to today's daily quiz segment where we shall be discussing important UPSC relevant questions that are based on today's important headlines. The very first question on your screen talks about Agni missile. Now the reason why this question has been picked up is a release in the Economic Times which talks about how India has successfully conducted a nighttime trial of new generation Agni P, that's Agni Prime Ballistic Missile. So this is in the light of boosting India's ballistic missile strategic deterrence capacity. So India has successfully tested this missile and the test has been conducted by Strategic Forces Command and the Defence Research Development Organisation. So this missile eventually is now vouched to replace the Agni-1 missile in SFC's arsenal of weaponry. With this, let's have a look at the two statements of the question. The first statement says Agni-P is an upgraded version of the Agni class that was developed as a part of IGMDP, that's Integrated Guided Missile Development Program. The statement is very, very intuitive. It is absolutely correct. That's the reason behind the launch of Agni P. The second statement says it is a two stage surface to air and solid fueled medium range ballistic missile. Now we need to be slightly careful here because the statement talks about surface to air. Whereas Agni P or Agni Prime is a two state surface to surface. Let's remember canister launched missile that is road mobile and solid fuel based. Hence the second statement clearly is not correct making A as the valid answer. Only the first statement here is valid. Moving on to the second question for the day we are talking about a unique telescope from India and we are referring to the International Liquid Mirror Telescope. The question says where is the International Liquid Mirror Telescope abbreviated as ILMT in the world situated. So where is the first ILMT across the world? It is in India. Let's see the options A. Is it Ladakh? Is it B. Udaipur? Now both these places are pretty well known for their observatories. C. Guwahati or is it D. Nainita? So here the correct answer is D because let's remember ILMT is the first liquid mirror telescope. Now this uses mercury and that's why it is unique for being designed exclusively for astronomical observations. And it is located at a place called Devasthal that is situated in Uttarakhand at an elevation of about 2450 meters making D your valid answer. The reason why we highlighted this question is due to an article in the Hindu from Science and Tech which talks about how India's Pratyush Observatory telescope is among such telescopes which astronomers want to put around the lunar surface so that we can have a much better chance of spotting any weak slight signal that's coming from the particular area of the lunar atmosphere. Hence D was the right answer. Now the third question here talks about again two statements. The first says owing to its antibacterial and antifungal properties, ethanol often referred to as ethyl alcohol is used in many hand sanitizers, medical wipes. In fact, it is also used as cleaning agent. It is also used as a varnishing agent. So it has multiple uses here. So is the first statement correct about ethanol? Now let's remember ethanol, which is sometimes also referred to as grain alcohol or simply alcohol, is in fact an organic compound that boosts off chemical formula, namely CH3, CH2OH. It is often obtained by the process of fermentation often by the fermentation of sugar cane. It is also used in making many esters. The first statement is valid. Second statement, when used as a fuel, ethanol is believed to reduce carbon monoxide and nitrogen oxide emissions. That is also a correct statement because we might have heard in the news how Indian government in fact has been strongly committed that by 2023, that's last year almost, we shall be blending 20% ethanol in petrol. The reason is to create such a clean fuel whose 
carbon emission is much lesser than conventional biofuels or conventional petroleum kerosene, that is solid fuels. So here, second statement is also absolutely valid. Now, let's remember for a long time, the debate and the controversy is on. Because when you talk about manufacturing ethanol, it can be made as a biofuel, not only from sugarcane, but also from substances like corn, wheat, predominantly from rice. In fact, rice has often been distributed into ethanol production from India's rice reserves. Now, this came into a big controversy because already there was food shortage happening and therefore the government decided to stop the supply of rice for ethanol manufacture. Hence here both the statements are valid making C as your correct response. The reason why we had the question is due to an Indian Express article that speaks about how there is no proposed resumption or no proposed continuing of selling subsidized rice for ethanol production and that has been said by the food secretary and as of now rice shall not be diverted for ethanol production claiming this to be a food wastage let's have a look at the fourth question of the day and the news which has triggered this question is one of its own kind it's a very important development let's have a look at the news first the news is coming from a PIB release. It says that the President of India has inaugurated India's first home-developed indigenous gene therapy for curing cancer. And we are talking about the CAR T cell therapy. Now, we have often heard that this therapy is an alternative to radiotherapy and immunotherapy, chemotherapy. This is unique because this is not using any foreign medication. In fact, human or patient's own cell are being utilized to cure cancer. So with India creating a new hope for cancer treatment, this is a major milestone in India's health domain. Now back to the question. The first statement here says, in the CAR T cell therapy, the T cells of the patient are removed and then they are later modified in the laboratory. These then produce the CAR T cells. Is that a correct statement? Yes, that is pretty much the CAR T cell therapy in fact. Second statement says, the response or the success rate of CAR T cell therapy is very high. It's 90%. But this is in case of certain specific cancers such as blood cancer, leukemia or in lymphomas. However, when you talk about certain other types of cancers, the success rate is slightly low. Again, the second statement is valid. Now, the only reason why the CAR T cell therapy is still a little ambiguous in terms of its efficacy is that it is not covering every type of cancer. However, it is working wonders for certain specific kind of cancers. On that note, let's remember that the CAR T cell therapy, although it has certain side effects, but the reason why it is being promoted and celebrated is because it is utilizing patient's own cell, which are then modified to activate C cells, T cells in the body. And T cells are nothing but a component of immune cell system. And therefore, it works by promoting immunity against these deviative cells. On that note, C becomes your answer because both the statements were valid here. Now, let's have a look at the PYQ here. This is coming to you. It says, in India, extended producer responsibility is a concept that was introduced as an important feature of which of the following initiatives? A here says the Biomedical Waste Management and Handling Rules 1998. B, the Recycled Plastic Manufactured and Usage Rules 1999. C talks about the E-Waste, Electronic Waste Management and Handling Rules 2011. And D talks about Food Safety and Standards Regulation 2011. Here absolutely C is your valid answer. Let's remember this initiative was revolutionary because for the first time in fact the government held producers responsible for not only collecting but also exchanging electronic waste. In fact, the producers here were also allowed to create some kind of producer responsibility organization through which they could form groups and then be responsible for collecting and disposing of e-waste to promote eco-friendly waste disposal making C as your valid answer. Now on to the fact of the day and we are going to talk about a yet interesting phenomena known as the SRM and this stands for solar geoengineering. Now latest event in the field of climate change and the 
combating capacity of human towards climate change comes in the form of solo geoengineering. There was a news recently which said that certain countries are experimenting with solar geoengineering. Why? Because they want to protect the earth from getting too heated because of sun's radiation. How effective is this? What is this? So solar geoengineering, as the name suggests, is a kind of strategy where solar radiation is manipulated. In fact, it is managed. It is about a collection of approaches that enable a reflection of sunlight back to the space so that the sunlight doesn't heat up the earth and in fact it is going back into the space so that the earth is allowed to cool down faster. Now, this is coming in the wake of massive heat waves across the world, massive climate changes, whether you talk about forest fires or whether you talk about the absolutely fluctuating La Lina, El Nino phenomena which have been delaying monsoons in very many many countries so solar engineering broadly works with two approaches here the first approach is stratospheric aerosol injection or SAI now under this strategy certain particles which are referred to as aerosols they are injected they are injected into the upper atmosphere and which eventually help in cooling down the climate the second strategy is marine cloud brightening or MCB under this, sea salt is used to encourage, stimulate clouds formation over the ocean, which also would prevent sunlight from reaching the surface. Hence, it is based on these two approaches that we can manipulate the insulation level or the receiving of sunlight level in order to modulate Earth's temperature. What's the basic idea about? The basic idea is to avoid increasing temperature of Earth's surface by absorbing energy from the sun in the form of short wave radiation. Now let's remember that greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, all these make it very difficult for infrared radiation to escape the Earth's atmosphere because they trap it. Once it's trapped, obviously a greenhouse phenomena takes place. The Earth becomes very, very clustered with heat. So this causes an imbalance between the incoming short wave radiation and the outgoing long wave radiation. The entire idea behind geoengineering is to manipulate that. So therefore, it aims at increasing the amount of heat that is radiated back into the space, which will then exceed the amount of heat that is retained. And this obviously is being done by artificial methods. Critics are arguing that it is a very short band-aid solution to the problem, but this is seeming like a desperate measure in the light of the climate change and associated problems that we are experiencing. And on that note, I shall take your leave for today's session. Thank you so much. See you soon with other such interesting sessions in future.